So we're heading towards the end of September, which of course, especially where I'm from, means the weather has started to cool down, especially during the evening time. And that means we're all gonna be bringing out our fall fragrances for rotation. And if you guys didn't know already, fall is my favorite season for fragrances. So in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you my top 10 fall niche fragrances of 2021. So stay tuned to find out what my top 10 is. Hey, what's going on guys? Hunter here and welcome back to my channel. If you're a returning subscriber, glad to have you here. And if you are new, what I do is I make fragrance related content. So if you love fragrances, please just hit that subscribe button down below. Be sure to hit the notification bell. And also be sure to follow my fragrance Instagram page. But yeah, guys, that's correct. From the intro, we're gonna be doing my top 10 fall fragrances of 2021. Now, this is gonna be like more of like fragrances I'm more excited to wear this year throughout the fall. And of course, with our fall fragrances, you're gonna look for like woody fragrances, spicy fragrances, maybe gourmands and things like that. So I cannot wait to share with you guys my top 10. So let's get right into it. So starting this list off with number 10 is gonna be a Rose Oud combo fragrance, which I love Rose Ouds. And I think Rose Ouds work the best in the fall once the weather starts to cool down and things like that. And at number 10, I have probably the most potent Rose Oud out of my entire collection or that I've even actually ever smelled from this combination. And that is Montal's Intense Blackout Oud. Now, if you guys are familiar with the original Blackout Oud, which is pretty popular from the house of Montal, this is actually different. This is the intense version, which is actually an extract of Bafon. Very, very potent juice here, guys. But with this fragrance, of course, you're gonna get that beautiful rose alongside the oud. Um, now, the oud in here is very, very dominant, actually, in this fragrance, especially as it dries down. But what you also get with this, which works wonderful in the fall, is a burst of patchouli, guys. I absolutely love patchouli. You get that earthiness, sometimes like a minty, mintiness to it as well, but such a beautiful fragrance and i'm so excited to wear this especially this fall guys since i haven't worn it that much lately but i've been keeping it for this weather so that is at number 10 is intense black oud so number nine is actually a tom ford private blend which a lot of people consider private blends to be designer some say it's niche personally i look at private blends as niche since they're usually more complex unique and just really really high quality but at number nine i actually have a fougere now fougeres they're usually good for like spring and things like that, but this is actually a darker take on Fougere and doesn't get much love, especially in the Pride Blend collection, and that is Fougere Platine. So with this one, of course, you're gonna get like lavender, sage, things like that you typically get in a Fougere, but the difference with this one is it adds tobacco and honey, which is amazing, especially for the fall weather, guys. This is actually a, a newer acquisition to my Pride Blend collection. I just recently got it and haven't got to wear it that much since it is a darker version of like a Fougere, which I love Fougeres like Beau Jour from Tom Ford, which is one of my favorite Fougeres of all time. This one is completely different. Of course, you get, like I said, you get that tobacco in here. So good alongside the honey. Now, honey is actually one of my favorite notes in fragrances. I absolutely love honey and wish more fragrances would actually use that note. It's kind of rare to find a good honey fragrance, but this one here is definitely a good one, guys. Check out Fougere Platine from Tom Ford if you haven't already. Besides, though, I do want to let you guys know this one has actually recently been discontinued when they re recently discontinued like most of their lines. So this one might be hard to find, but if you do come across it, definitely check this one out, especially for the fall time. So coming in at number eight, I'm actually shocked that this one was higher up on my list. The only reason is because I've actually owned it for quite a long time and I wore it so much, but it is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. And it had to make this list, of course, and that is Creech Royal Oud. Now guys, this is one of my favorite, favorite fragrances that is out there, to be honest with you guys. If you follow me since the start, you would actually know that I've actually reviewed this one like a year or so, almost two years ago. And this is just a masterpiece in my eyes, guys. But of course, Royal Oud's in the name. The Oud is more in the background. It's not an Oud dominant fragrance whatsoever. With this one, you more get like um, a cedar wood, sandalwood combination, which works great in this fragrance. But in the opening, you get like this lemon vibe, which of course Creed's usually known for. But I gotta tell you guys right now, if you are actually a fan of Creed or at least of Ventus, and because obviously Ventus is the most popular fragrance from Creed, and a lot of people only own Aventus in their collections, definitely check out Royal Oud if you want to smell luxurious, pretty much rich. This is going to do it for you guys. This is more of like um, 
if you're going to like a like a high-end event or something like that this isn't really like usually a casual fragrance that you wear to work and stuff even though i have gotten many compliments on this fragrance by people around they absolutely love it but more of like a higher end uh business kind of stuff like that you want to wear a royal dude so check this one out especially for fall time okay so at number seven is actually a dominant oud fragrance and i love this stuff guys and it is aqua de parma's oud this is the eau de parfum as you can tell from the black bottle this is actually a flanker well not a flanker but like the new version of the colonia oud which is actually eau de cologne i believe it's the same um same fragrance just higher concentration and also contained real natural oud which aqua de parma says but yeah with this one you're going to get an opening of like mandarin orange alongside the oud and the leather this stuff is fantastic now if you're not really a fan of like the darker barnyardy kind of ouds you might not like this one because as it dries down you do pick up on the barnyardy side of the oud which i absolutely love guys that's how i think oud usually is supposed to smell like at least from all the fragrances i smell and stuff like that i know it can kind of come across like um like clean soapy kind of oud or like fruity oud i mean but this one here comes across really like dirty and barnyardy and i just love it if you're looking for that kind of fragrance, especially for fall, look no further than Aqua de Parma Oud, at least the Eau de Parfum. Coming in at number six is actually a fragrance by Rosa Duff himself. Can you guys guess which one it is? Of course you guys probably can. It's a Creation E or Enigma, depending on where you're located in the world. Now this one, you cannot not have it in your niche top fall list, guys. You'll see this pop up as pretty much a lot of people's favorite fragrance of all time. I can definitely see why, but to put this one in words, I get like a cherry Coke vibe from this fragrance, which is strange because there's no cherry or any like Coca-Cola notes listed in the fragrance that would resemble them, like resemblance that smell. But what you get with this one is a booziness from the rum. You get a nice creamy vanilla alongside the rum. You also get like benzoin and tobacco. And all those notes together, guys, makes a fantastic fragrance, which is usually like from uh, my experience with Rosa Dove, at least his fragrances, he makes them masterfully, guys. They are so blended well together, especially Elysium, guys. They go through all stages, top notes, middle notes, and base notes. And you, it changes throughout the wearing. So with this one, I absolutely love it. That's why it's coming in at number six. I haven't worn it that much since I recently got it, not too long ago, but it works best in the fall and usually probably even winter as well, but fall time for sure. So that's number six is creation -y or Enigma, depending on where you're located in the world. So at number five is another staple in my fall rotation, a fragrance I cannot live without during the fall times, and that fragrance is Parfum Zamali Leighton. Now, if this is the first time you guys are hearing about Leighton, which it might not be since it is a very popular fragrance, especially from the house of Parfum Zamali, what I can describe this fragrance as is apple pie. Now, if that sounds great to you, trust me, it really is. What you're gonna get with this is of course apple. You're also gonna get, or actually it's, it's really crisp apple in this fragrance to be honest with you guys. You're also gonna get vanilla as well, which gives it of course that warm qualities and that like smoothness to the fragrance. But also cardamom, which adds a little bit of spiciness to it and sandalwood in the base as well. Just a wonderful, wonderful creation. I absolutely love this fragrance. And like I said, I cannot work, live without it. Even though I love it so much, I wear it actually throughout the whole year because I'm just so in love with this fragrance, but it does work best in the colder months, especially during fall time. So definitely get your hands on Leighton by Popham the Molly. I'm gonna know number four is actually a fragrance house that I'm pretty new to, but after getting this one into my collection, I cannot wait to test more from this house. And that fragrance is of course, Serge Luton's Baptiste de Faux. Now, wow, this is one of the most complex fragrances I've ever actually smelled in my life. It does have some very unique uh, notes in here, such as gunpowder, which of course gives it that smokiness to it. But you also have um, tangerine in here and also gingerbread, which gives it a nice like uh, gourmand touch to it, which works the best in the fall time. And of course you have like woody notes in the dry down, but the gunpowder, the gingerbread all together makes it a very dark, mysterious fragrance. Very, very complex, very niche like, of course, with Serge Luton's. I think one of the sayings is you don't, you never truly try niche until you try a Serge Luton's. I don't know if that's really true, but I can definitely kind of stand behind that since how unique this fragrance is. There's nothing 
I've never actually smelled that smells quite like this fragrance. I guess it kind of has a Serge Luton touch to it. But of course, a fragrance with gunpowder note in it, I mean, that is intriguing, of course. And yeah, this is well worth being in my fall list, especially at number four. And look at that juice color. That stuff is dark. It kind of gives me like black Afghano vibes with it. Very dark juice, very dark, mysterious fragrance. But I haven't worn it that much because wearing this in the spring or summertime, which when I got this fragrance, it's not gonna work the best. So in the fall time, I'm gonna be definitely wearing this a lot and look forward to a review on this. I've never actually reviewed it yet, but that is Serge Luton's Baptiste de Faux. All right, so we're getting in my top three fall fragrances for this year. Now, this one I did review. I actually gave it a perfect 10 out of 10 score. And that fragrance is, of course, M. Wash in Toulouse Man. One of my favorite fragrances of all time, guys. I remember when I, one of my subscribers sent me out a sample of this stuff. First time I smelled it, I was completely blown away by it, guys. With this fragrance, you're of course gonna get um, well not of course, you guys probably don't know, but in the opening you have like this oregano note, which is kind of gives it a gourmand touch, a nice herb. You're also gonna get incense. This is pretty much an incense bomb. If you're not into incense fragrances, you're not gonna like this one, since the incense is very dominant. You also get oud in the dry down as well. Uh, I don't pick up on a lot of oud in this fragrance, to be honest with you, but I do get hints of oud as it dries down. And you also get, of course, leather and the nice warm amber in this fragrance. Now, this one obviously had a place that at least in my top three fall fragrances. The only reason, it, it, I mean, this could have easily been number two or one, but I have owned it for quite a while now. I have worn it a lot too, but this is one of my all time favorite fragrances is of course Interlude Man. I haven't actually tried Interlude Black Iris or Interlude 53, which is just a higher concentration of Interlude, I believe it's like 53% uh, oils, but the original Interlude Man cannot go wrong with this fragrance. If you haven't checked this one out, definitely do so. It does not get the name of Blue Beast for no reason. So coming in at number two is one of my newest fragrances that I've added to my collection. And the moment I posted an Instagram picture of this fragrance, you guys been hounding me down for a review. Trust me, the review is coming on this fragrance, so stay tuned for that. Just been trying to test it more, but it is coming. And that fragrance is coming from the house of Frederick Mall, and that is from the Desert Gems collection, and it is Promise, as you can see right there. Oh man. This is a special, special fragrance. Of course, the Desert Gems collection comes from like uh, Dubai inspired fragrances. And this is a good one here. Now with this fragrance, you're gonna get a, of course, you're gonna get this nice crisp, absolute crisp apple in this alongside a rose, which of course in Dubai, they're known for like rose, oud, things like that. Now the worst thing is this is one of four that's in the Desert Gems collection. You of course have the moon, you have promise, you have the night and the dawn. Um, this is the cheapest one out of the collection. Um, I came across a great deal for this fragrance, so I couldn't pass it up. I'm very curious about all the other desert gems, but back to this one, uh, all the other desert gems have oud listed in the notes. This one does not, but I do get this sort of like animalic touch to this fragrance, which might be oud. There is a woodiness to it and it's dried down, but it also has castorium. Now, of course, if you guys don't know what castorium is, it is an animalic note. Um, it also has uh, cipro oil, which is kind of, I'm not sure 100% what that smell. I think it's like very like earthy, green, almost pine-like, I believe. But yeah, you're gonna get a bunch of rose. I believe there's actually two different roses in this fragrance alongside the apple. And this is just a work of art from Frederick Mall actually from Dominic Ropion. What I love about Frederick Malls is that they list the perfumer on every bottle. Now, the only other Frederick Mall I actually own is of course Muskrat Azur, which I fell in love with. I was gonna actually put that on the list as well, but I had to put Promise for fall, guys. I cannot wait to wear this one more. I am so, so excited to wear this. But like I said, look for the full review coming on my channel very soon of Promise, but that's coming in at number two. All right, so we reached the number one spot of my top 10 niche fall fragrances for 2021. Now, 
This is a fragrance I just also recently got in. The company actually sent me this one alongside two other, which I'm absolutely thankful for. I'm gonna be reviewing every single one of them, but this one had to come in at number one. The moment I got these in and smelled them, guys, it was like no other fragrances that I actually ever smelled. The quality and everything like that. Now, the fragrance I'm speaking about is from the House of Fragrance Dubois, and this is New York Intense. Oh my goodness, this fragrance. Now, if you guys are familiar with the House of Fragrance Dubois, what actually is the most intriguing to me is that they pretty much have their own agarwood farm, which is of course oud. So they grow their own oud in-house and actually lend it out to other niche fragrance brands as well, which is absolutely incredible. They use no synthetic oud in any other fragrances. And this is definitely one that has a phenomenal oud in here. But with this fragrance, you're actually gonna get blackberry Blackberry is very dominant in this. You're also gonna get that myrrh. So you're gonna get some resins in here as well. Alongside of course, oud, which is very, very prominent. When you spray this one on, you get the oud right away in this. And also you get like a cinnamon, some honey in here. Very, very well done. This is a masterpiece in my opinion. Definitely gonna be one of my favorite fragrances. Of course, as I start to wear it more, that's why it had to be number one. If you guys haven't tried any of the house from the house of Frederick Sabal, definitely check them out. Um, I had New York Intense sent to me. I have Cannabis Blue and Cannabis Intense. You probably see them right behind me. So if you're actually interested in any of those fragrances, stay tuned for a review. But for the fall time, New York Intense has to be number one for a good reason. <sighs> this is just so, so complex. This smells so luxurious. Yeah, definitely some of the best quality fragrances on the entire market is Fragrance de Bois. But that's gonna be number one is New York Intense. Let me know down below your top 10 uh, fall fragrances or just any fall fragrances you're excited to wear, designer or niche, let me know, I'm definitely curious. But that's gonna wrap up this top 10 fragrance uh, list. Leave it a like if you liked the video, subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I'll catch all you guys in the next fragrance upload. Take care, everybody.